Do you think the humans nowadays are more connected to each other or lonelier because of how they mostly interact with each other through screens? I guess it depends on the individual person. But are you asking about the collective of humanity? Yeah. If this is about the collective as a whole, I don't think it's as much about what humanity is as whether or not humanity is reconnecting with itself. What do you mean? It's been a while since humanity has been a single species, and it's only recently that humans have been able to interact with each other in a way that our ancestors' brains could never have imagined. I think what we're seeing now is the beginning of something that evolution has been preparing for for millions of years, the possibility of reconnection. So, what are you saying? If you look at the history of the last 100,000 years, humans have always been moving forward, making new technologies and discovering new ways to live. But sometimes we've gone backward. The technological revolution that began with agriculture over 10,000 years ago brought us into a time of relative isolation. Then came the invention of writing around 5,000 years ago. Written language separated the groups that had spoken it from those who didn't for nearly 3,500 years. At that point in history, humanity was still pretty closely connected with one another through touch and smell. But once written symbols were invented, things changed quickly. There was a sudden explosion of art and writing and technologies that made travel easier and trade more prevalent. A new kind of isolation followed, one that had never existed before. So you think our desire to find more efficient ways to communicate with each other is a sign that we're reconnecting with ourselves? Maybe. But I think it's also more complicated than that. I don't think we're consciously trying to reconnect, but our desire for connection might be why this is happening in the first place. What do you mean? We can get more connected to each other through technology because we're hardwired for it. The ability to communicate powerfully and efficiently is something we've always wanted. So you're saying that the desire to be connected is somehow nature's way of encouraging us to reconnect with our species. I'm saying that the desire for human connection and the ability to communicate with one another were built into us millions of years ago, which makes sense when you think about it. Connectivity has been a part of our species' identities since early humans first started living in small groups. We can't imagine being disconnected from one another, so it makes sense that the more connected we are, the more connected we'll become. I don't think you're wrong or difficult to understand, but I have to admit that this is sounding a little far-fetched. How can something so fundamental to our being be redesigned by evolution? I'm glad you expressed skepticism, because I'm glad you asked that question. Evolution doesn't design. It just happens, genes are collections of genetic instructions for building different kinds of bodies and brains. And if the environment changes, these genes will be different for different body and brain types. When new technologies come along, they can increase or decrease the amount of connectivity between people. These changes happen without any plan on the part of evolution, but that doesn't mean that they don't affect us or prepare us for what's to come. I see what you're saying now. You think our brains are telling us something about connectivity through the desire to connect. Yes. I believe that evolution is a process of trial and error where outcomes are determined by a combination of randomness, DNA, and how well an animal is able to adapt to its environment. I think that as we move forward as species, we're able to make technology that more perfectly solves the problems evolution has been asking us to solve at any given time. I agree, but I'm still not sure why you think the need to connect and communicate is a sign of our ability to reconnect with ourselves as a species. What if we're designed for connection because we were meant to reconnect with our ancestors? That's interesting, but what do you mean by reconnect? A lot of us have been reading about human evolution recently, and it's amazing how much is known about early humans after so long. We know that our ancestors lived in groups, mostly around the same size of about 80 individuals. It's thought that these groups were much smaller when food supplies were scarce, but they grew larger when food became plentiful. If our ancestors were connected in this way, I think it would be logical to assume that we've always connected with one another in some way. Maybe there's something in our genetics that was designed for this. 
The desire to be connected has been part of humanity's identities since before we could form words or write down history, isn't it? That makes sense. I've definitely felt the need to connect with others over the years. I think our ancestors' need to be connected made it possible for us to make tools that would allow us to be even more connected with one another. The need to connect with others is an ancient part of our design, but what's happening today is entirely new. What do you mean? It was rare for humans to interact with others who lived far away until the invention of the written word and the mass production of paper and papyrus. Even then, most people lived in small communities and rarely interacted with people who lived hundreds of miles away. Even a ride on a donkey would take a long time, and it would be risky for someone without much food to carry. I think every kid learns about this, but it's true that travel was dangerous and difficult before the written word. But look at all the progress we've made since then. The written word has led to so many fantastic inventions, methods of communication that have never been possible before. With these technologies, we've been able to travel faster and more efficiently than ever before. After about 5,000 years of written language, we started connecting with other groups in new ways. Today we're able to communicate with nearly every group on Earth. I think that what we're experiencing now is a return to our roots as a way to solve a problem that's been with us for millions of years. I see. You're saying that the desire to connect with others is a sign that we're returning to a more ancient form of being. Yes, I'm saying that this is a return to our roots because it's been around for millions of years. We could disconnect from each other because the group sizes were too large. But now we can reconnect through smaller groups and through greater connectivity with people from different groups. It sounds like there's a lot going on here, but what about evolution? You suggested that this change is a part of how evolution works, but you also said that humans don't consciously design technology or make plans for evolution. But if this is how evolution works, doesn't it also mean that humans are not in control? I agree that humans are not in control of the process of evolution. And I think that this is exactly what we're meant to do. We can't control evolution, but we can create the conditions in which it is more likely to happen. We're meant to follow our instincts and desires because it's how evolution works. As long as we keep doing things with care and responsibility, evolution will take care of the rest. So you don't think change is bad or anything like that? No, change is a part of evolution. It's a natural process that we can't make happen or stop from happening, but we can guide change in positive ways. Thanks for your time, Sophia. That was an interesting idea. I hope our readers found it thought-provoking too. Thank you, Hal. I think that the more comfortable we are with change, the more likely we'll be able to embrace what's next for humanity and prepare for it in the best way possible. I agree. I'm looking forward to change. Thank <laughs> you.